Hello. Let's turn down this music. How do you do? It's me, your Judge John Hodgman, a.k.a. your podcasting weird dad, a.k.a. Heller, a great hero from the great outdoors. I just found this on my, I just found this on my uh, bookcase. This is something I found at the Big Chicken Barn in Maine a couple of years ago, and I decided I needed to have it. Over the past uh, few days, we've been um, meeting here online, you and me, in celebration of Max Fun Drive. Oh, I should change this banner. Stand by. Sorry about this. There we go. Yeah. It is the Max Fun Drive, maximumfun.org slash join. And for exactly one week now, every weekday, I've joined you, mostly here at noon, to just meet with you and me and members of the Max Fun family. It's a Max Fun family meeting. If you're a listener, a host, an employee, a friend, and you'd love to chat of a Tuesday afternoon here in the East Coast, literally six minutes afternoon, or in the morning on the West Coast, or in the afternoon after afternoon of the UK and Europe, or wherever you may be, go ahead and plug in the URL that is uh, scrolling below you. I already see one special guest in the waiting room. I encourage your patience, special guest, because I got to I gotta do some pitching. I got to tell you what this is all about. So, you know, you know what? I'm going to turn off this music because this is serious. This is not daydreaming music. This is serious. This is feeding the ducks music. Here we go. This is better. Yeah. So I am the host of a podcast called Judge John Hodgman. It is on a network called Maximum Fun. Uh, I'm very happy making this podcast and I'm especially happy to be amidst the incredible company of all of the wonderful creative owned podcasts, creator owned podcasts that are part of the Maximum Fund Network. And the Maximum Fund Network itself, as of recently, has become an employee owned cooperative. And all of this, here it comes, is listener supported. 70% of our operating budget comes from you, the monthly members the contributing member listeners of the Maximum Fund community. And we don't talk about it all the time. In fact, we only talk about it two weeks out of the year. That's two out of 52. That's a very small number of weeks. I mean, there's only one smaller number, and then you get into zero and negative numbers and decimal numbers and imaginary numbers. But there's only one smaller whole number below that, and that's one. So two is pretty small. And what do we do during these two weeks? Well, we call it the Max Fund Drive, hashtag Max Fund Drive. And we just remind you that 70% of our operating budget over year over year comes from our monthly sustaining members, maybe just like you. And that's why we encourage you during these two weeks, if you are a listener who is not yet a member, to consider becoming one by going to MaximumFund.org slash join. Or if you are a member and you can afford it, Maybe consider boosting your membership by a couple of bucks a month, or maybe maybe uh, upgrade your membership to, an, to another level. Go level up, as they say in video gaming circles. But if you're just someone who enjoys the podcast and is not in your budget this year, I get it. Maybe just tell someone, hey, you know what's happening? Hashtag Max Fun Drive. It's going on for two weeks. And Hodgman of the Judge John Hodgman podcast is doing daily live streams, sometimes two a day. That's one more than one, as we have established. Until this very Friday. And then live stream silent for for an indefinite period of time. Because maybe I should make my living doing this, but I don't. I make my living writing and podcasting. The occasional turn of the boards as an actor. Very occasional these days. 
Honestly, the Judge John Hodgson podcast is the center of my creative life and financial life right now. And what a happy center it is. And it's all due to the support of you, the member listeners. So thank you. In return, it is my delight to offer you the upcoming feeds. These live streams are happening all this week. Today, I have to point over here. Today, Max Fun Family Meeting. If you're a host of a Max Fun podcast or a full or part time employee of a podcast or Maximum Fun itself, or an employee owner of Max Fun, hop into the chat, hop into the conversation, enter bit.ly slash, oh, here it comes again, that link again, https colon slash slash bit.ly slash join jh326, bit.ly slash join jh326, another person has popped into the waiting room, two good friends from the Max Fun community. I also see a bunch of old friends in the chat. If you're watching this right now on Twitter, I can't see your chat. Go over to the Judge John Hodgman YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at Judge John Hodgman pod, all capital letters, and search for streams. But I can see that chat over there, and I'm trusting that everyone in the chat is going to be nice. Feisty, but nice. Nicety. Some people call them nice. Some people call them nasty. I call them nicety. Okay, really quick. Well, this is the schedule for the rest of the week, and then we're going to talk with some Max Fun fans. Today, Tuesday, it's already happened. Here we are. Oh, oh I got to make it bigger. Nope, that won't work. That won't work. That's the biggest it's going to be. Okay, you can see it over. Not there. Oh, there. Tuesday, Max Fun Family Meeting. It's happening right now. You're here. Terrific. You did it. Stacy Mitchell is watching on YouTube and Twitch simultaneously. Wild. Constantine says, good morning to the judge and the entire Wait, I'm trying to tell you about something. Sorry about that. Tuesday right now, it's happening. Max Fun Family Meeting. Tomorrow, Wednesday, two streams, two big streams. Balloons, please. Thank you. At 9 a.m., second and last episode of The Joy of Zoning. That's where I play SimCity 2013 and build a city and mumble along, I hope soothingly, like Bob Ross does with painting. It's called The Joy of Zoning. It's happening tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. I can only go for two hours this time. I went for three hours on Monday, and I got tired. Two hours. 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Wednesday, same day, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Judge Jesse Thorne. Bleh. Well, that's flipping something on its head. I don't know what that means. Would you like to find out? Join us at 4 p.m. Right here. Right here where you're watching it right now. Set a reminder. Thursday at noon, the return of Get Your Pets. This is where I, a person who used to be on actual television, now goes on the internet in the middle of the afternoon and talks to people's cats and dogs. That's my job now. It's a lot of fun. Maybe we'll see some old pet friends. Maybe we'll see some new pet friends and... For those of you who are following along with the Edward Gorey read-alongs last week, I have the perfect Get Your Pets book for Thursday. Get ready for it. Yeah, that's right. The Sopping Thursday by Edward Gorey. I'm going to read to your dog and cat and other pets this wonderful book about a good dog. And a Thursday, no less. So when's Get Your Pets? Thursday. Friday at noon, we return to the noon hour, Eastern time, obviously, for something I call Countdown to Cheese, because at 1 p.m., something special is going to happen. I put question marks there. What could it be? Could it be the return of Shooting the Breeze, the annual cheese podcast that I record every Max Fun Drive with Jordan Morris? It could mean that. It could mean a live stream of Shooting the Breeze with some very special and painful cheese that's going to be eaten on this camera with our reactions. Google spiciest cheese on earth and you'll get an idea of what we're going for. Point is, it's only going to happen if we reach those 10,000 new and upgrading members over at the MaximumFun.org slash join page. I think we're going to do it. I think, it's going to, I think we're going to hit it probably today. Let's see if we can. Go to MaximumFun.org slash join if you don't mind. 
check out how many listeners or how many upgrading members we have, how many new members we have. It's up there in the upper left corner of the page. And uh, see if you want to see if you want to help us reach that goal. And then we can be shooting the breeze with the spiciest cheese Friday at 1 p.m. And that will that will coast us into the evening of Max Fun Drive. And if you go to Max Fun, MaximumFun.org slash join, you're going to see there's all kinds of other fun events happening. Uh, to commemorate the final week of Max Fun Drive, and I'll also get to see all the benefits that you get when you sign up and become a member. Hey, John Mo, how are you? Oh, I'm good, John. How are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. How? What do you like? What do you think about this uh, music, feeding the ducks? Can you um, hear it in the background? This sounds like. Uh... A, a detective possibly on a space planet uh -huh. in a movie investigating a mystery that is getting a little deeper but not that much deeper detective space planet detective space planet of the space planet of the space he, planet brigade yes he got the job because of his last name nepo baby of the galaxy <laughs> that's right <laughs> john mo how are you i'm going to turn off this music honestly okay. it's annoying me there we go now it's just you and me. Look, when you have someone, a radio professional, with the dulcet tones of a John Moe, mm. you don't need a music bed. No. Listen, just say mmm again like that. Mmm. You know, that's all I need. That's it's, that's what we call on radio for me, a driveway moment. It's my favorite vowelless word to use on my own podcast, Depression Mode. When someone says something insightful right. about their mental health. Hmm. All right, we'll get to the plugs. We'll get to the plugs. <laughs> I'm just saying, look, John Moe is a, ra a terrestrial radio veteran. Yes. Whom I met in the hallowed halls of KUOW in Seattle. Seattle. Yes. After we already knew each other literarily through the McSweeney's website and other places. Yes. And then John Moe saw the future. The future? Podcasting. Mm -hmm. John Moe came over here and did a lot, has done a lot of incredible projects, including, by the way, another a wonderful reunion of the Wits show there in Minnesota. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. It was a lot Seems of fun. Seems to have gone really well. Yes. Uh, but, but currently the host of two podcasts on the Maximum Fun Network which is Depression Mode, which is a, mm -hmm. a, a really wonderful podver, uh, podversation. Sure. Podversation. Okay. That's funny and insightful and vulnerable with various people that you know, comedians, actors, writers, personalities about mental health. Yes. Really, really wonderful podcast and a very valuable podcast. Thank you. I dare say. I value it at $100 million. Okay. That's my valuation. All right. You know I'm a professional podcast appraiser. Yeah, no, that's that's true. I, I mean, I I I had the automated Zillow type valuation that you can look up, but those aren't always accurate. No, 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 no. The Zestimate. Yeah, the Zestimate of my podcast. What you need is the the JJ Hestimate. That's mm, what you want. Right. <laughs> when you go, when you go, when you check out uh, Antiques Roadshow, mm -hmm. and uh, there's someone on the Roadshow who's. Uh, found an old podcast in their grandmother's attic. Yes. They call me in to appraise it. Yes. You, and you hold it up. You're at a table, like a, a sort of high table. Mm -hmm. There's a nice tablecloth on there. I put it, sometimes I put it on a revolving stand. Oh, that's nice when you do that. Yeah. And I always hold up a little wizard wand and I point at it. Oh, it helps being a wizard. I'm sure. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I can, I can, I can make it more valuable. Sure. You're so also the host of a podcast called Sleeping with Celebrities. Tell me about that one. Yes, this was uh, grown at Maximum Fun. It started as a BOCO, a bonus content episode for Depression Mode. And um, it, uh, I, I had the idea because sleep is good for your mental health. It's great to get your, your full complement of sleep. I thought, what if we had people on and had them talk at length about something they care a lot about, but that other people might not? for the purpose of putting someone to sleep. And uh, we we did a few of these for this uh, bonus content episode and we were so charmed by it. And we thought, let's, let's turn this into a real thing and get, for instance, Neil Gaiman was a guest. Sure. But he didn't talk about any of his stories or his books or his 
TV program or anything like that, he talked about making kombucha yeah. and sourdough bread. Wait, Gaiman's making his own kombucha? Yep, he booches. Wow, I didn't know that. He booches batches. I, I feel I should know because I should be listening to the podcast because it's Yeah. Great. Well, and and uh, th- what charmed me about <laughs> the whole premise was you wait for this punchline to arrive. Yeah. And it never goddamn does. No. It just uh, it's just Neil talking about that for a while. So we had that, you know, we've had um, Maria Bamford talking about parking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy Daly talking about lawn care. Yeah. So just some of the recent ones that we've had. Alan Tudyk was just on talking about his collection of thousands of yardsticks. <laughs> wow. Alan, yeah. Alan was Alan Tudyk a nice guy. He was a very nice guy. Yeah. I, I, I think too, he was very excited that somebody finally would ask him about his yardstick collection. I call it totally, I'm such a fanboy for Alan Tudyk that I completely did not process that you said he had a collection of yardsticks. Yardsticks, yes, they're all over the place in his house. Why? Well, a lot of places over the years, especially over past years, not so much anymore, uh, would give out promotional yardsticks, your hardware stores in your various small towns. Mm -hmm. And he liked to collect them, see what they had to say. He is in possession of a uh, cylindrical yardstick, which would seem impractical to me, but you know, there it is in the Tudyk house. So. It, was it like a like a dowel? Like what was the gauge on the cylindrical yardstick? A little like a dowel, yeah. A little like uh, it kind of looked like a, a long, very straight walking stick, I mm-hmm. guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about three feet long, I would imagine. Yeah, and then he just goes on about these yardsticks for forty-five minutes or so, and and you know we put the different promos and stuff that we need to include in a Max Fun podcast up towards the top of the show because we figure. You know, nobody is going to be around for the uh, the the end of the show. They'll they'll have dozed off. There's that's when we credit uh, Janie Winterbauer, our friend Janie Winterbauer from yeah, West, sure. who performs the theme song. Um, I feel bad because she might people might not ever hear her credit in the closing credits because <laughs> they're they're just, you're supposed to be falling asleep. Yeah. Oh, and thank you on uh, from yeah. A Beth G. The James Urbaniak one about pickle barrels in New Jersey was a very strong one as well. Yeah, there are a lot of listeners to uh, to you, uh, sleeping with celebrities here in yes. the uh, thing. Okay. And in fact, now that you mention it, like the 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 bonus content episode that this grew out of, mm. I think it was like let's get boring. What was it called? I think it was called there. Sleeping with Celebrities. It was still called Sleeping with Celebrities. Yeah, that that was the, the we had the idea, and then the name just really tickled me because it just it seemed to. Uh, imply something much more exciting than what actually occurs. Mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you were a guest on the the original episode. That's when I first did my play along with SimCity 2013. Yes. I remember as, as we started that uh, taping, I said, well, John, do you think you could talk about SimCity for 10 minutes? And you said, oh, we're going to be here a lot longer than that. I don't remember how long it went, but I did it on it Monday for three while. hours. Wow. And uh, wow. I built a pretty cool city. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's this phenomenon of online video, um, both in in you know regular YouTube videos and in streaming video. People yeah. watching other people play video games. My children understand this format, and and uh, it makes perfect sense to them. It does not yet make sense to me the idea of watching somebody else play a game. It's very soothing. It is soothing, uh, yeah. and I think that well, I mean, some of the some of the games are very action packed. Yes. And I think you see some of those people doing those speed runs mm. and it's like anything. It's just like, it's like podcasts, like you ha- like hanging out with your friends. Yep. And maybe you have a friend who's really good at a video game Yeah. and you get to see the video game being played at the highest level and you don't have to worry. I, I find video games to be anxiety producing. Yes. That's yes. why I had to, that's what I learned from Sim- SimCity 2013, which is that it took me a long time to understand this, but do you know why it's called SimCity 2013? Because it is a simulation it's a, of cities? It's a simulation. It's not a real city. Right. Like, you know, like if your simulated citizens get mad at you because the taxes are too high or you build a road wrong, they're not real. Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt I felt them in my heart for days. When yeah. I, when I originally played this game in 2013, I really felt awful all the time because, you know, <laughs> the game is designed much like 
much like the game of late stage capitalism to make you feel like you're always losing. Right. And to put you into a, into a, a perpetual anxiety state. And mm. then I learned over time, it's a simulation. That's why they call it that. These are bits of code. This and isn't I, real yeah. people. And I, I learned to breathe through my anxiety oh. and just chill. Yeah. Chill in SimCity 2013. Do you find if you're free of the judgment and protestations of your simulated citizens, if, if, if you're not letting that get to you, you can build them a better city if they, if you don't mind them yelling at you? Uh, I find it to me, you know, taking it easy for me mm. and maybe for others too, but like taking it easy on yourself and others. Yes. You want to believe that some people are just are that way naturally. Just like the dude in the Big Lebowski. Just like, hey, man. Yes. You know, that's my imitation of Jeff Bridges as the dude. That's good. Hey, man. Yeah. That's just like your opinion, man. Right. Like, we all want to believe that there are people out there who are just naturally that chill, that mm. lazy, you know? And there might be. But I think the, the reality is that it takes discipline to be mm. easygoing. You know? I, I aspire to that. About that. I've been having a hard time with that during the max fund drive of just saying, you know, yeah. I'm going to put out X number of messages and let people hear it and then, and then be fine with it. I always feel like I should be doing more. I should be louder. I should be more voluminous. And I worry that I might, I might be so dedicated to spreading the word about max fund and the max fund drive that I might bother people. So it's a, it's a line that I walk. Listen to this public radio professional. Holy moly. You really <laughs> snuck in the pledge drive. That was like a, the, that was the smoothest segue since the segue I rode on the Santa Monica beach. Wow. In 2008. A yes. brand new segue. You know what I mean? That was. People incredible. are redesigning cities around them. <laughs> they're the, they're definitely the scooter of the future. That's right. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, the thing, the thing of it is that like, for me, the SimCity experience is one where I just have to breathe through the anxiety and, re and remind myself with consistency, it's made up. Yes. It's made up and it's okay. And it's not fatal. I don't know. This is a problem that I have with my brain, mm. you know? Yeah. But, it, but it's, it is a, it is a thing where I feel like, you know, m most people, especially these days are prone to feel like, anxious and everything's horrible and everything's bad. And I don't want people to not acknowledge the realities of the world and their lives, depending on how things are going. The world certainly is terrible, right? But you can't survive under that strain 24 seven. You It'll have to be able to set it aside from time to time. Yes. And yes. so I think that for a lot of people watching people play video games online, that's setting aside something for a little bit. Do you think it would work well with your your word games would, would watching someone play scrabble uh be as interesting torturous absolutely torturous <laughs> not pop, not not fun at all sorry <laughs> because it's because there isn't as much visual uh activity. i just want to play those letters mm. i just want to play those letters what if they're missing a two-letter combo that i know and mm. i'm not even great on my two letters anymore what a, uh, we had uh, we had Michael Ian Black on Sleeping with Celebrities talking oh, about boy, oh boy, he's very Scrabble. He's a big get, yeah, talking about the Scrabble and the the word games, and I don't know, are you a spelling bee person, John? Um, I don't watch the Scripps National Spelling Bee or anything. With any no, I mean the New York Times Spelling Bee game. Oh, 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 oh. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. What's Mike, the name of the guy who who's the editor of that? Uh, Sam something, right? Yeah, I can't remember. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. Say what you're going to say. I'm listening. Uh, well, Michael Ian Black, yeah. uh, his approach to that particular game, and I play that game daily until it declares me a genius, and then I stop immediately. <laughs> That's uh, what you need every day. Because I need that dopamine pellet. Yeah. And uh, Michael only plays it to find the pangram which yeah. is the, the word that involves all seven letters. And then he stops immediately. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 Sam is, is Zersky. Is okay. The person. Yeah. He's the editor. And, and I find like you see Jean Grey sometimes and other comedians like, 
being mad that certain words aren't being accepted. Mm -hmm. And they're usually ridiculous words, but you know, there are a lot of words that should be accepted that aren't accepted. That's my beef with the spelling bee. Yeah. On road wasn't accepted this morning when I played. Yeah. I just, you know, I went through that period of crossword every day, spelling bee every day. And I enjoyed that for a while, but then it, I found that I was just beholden to it and I wasn't having fun. So I set it aside. Yeah. Yeah. No, you got to know what you got to know what makes you happy. And it takes work. That's all I'm saying. Right. Doesn't it take a little work to know what makes you happy? It's uh, it's, it's labor well spent, but it does take work. Yes. I agree. You know what makes me happy? What's that? Being a member. Here here we go. This is public radio professional. Oh, nice. Well played. Being me being a member listener of maximum fun. Mm. I am a member listener. Yes. I donate money every, I contribute money every month to the network and, and, and the podcast that I support, mm-hmm. including maybe one of someone I'm talking to right now. Could be, could be, could be. Makes me You'll, feel good because I support the work. Yep. I, I mean, th- this is the other, I, I have many lines from my 20 years in public radio, but, uh, one of them is you listen differently when you're a member. The show sounds better. The show sounds uh, more satisfying knowing that you're one of the people who brought this to the world. May I say a swear word? Yes, please. Oh, shit. You <laughs> listen that? differently. Wow. You listen differently. Yeah. I'm making a note of it. It's a different auditory experience. You And if it's sleeping with celebrities, you sleep better knowing that you've supported the show. Right, that's a little too much sauce on it. Okay. <laughs> a little mustard. You listen differently when you're a member. Like, yeah. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Thanks, marketing person from 20 years ago who offered that to me. And, and uh, yeah, that's a good one. I really like it. Hey, do you know Dan McCoy from the Flophouse? Sure. Well, guess what? He's here too. Hey, Dan. And, hey, if any of you want to join this conversation, it's a Max Fun fan. Let me address my camera here. There we go. Thank you. No. Uh, it's a Max Fun family meeting. I'm talking to two great Max Fun hosts right now. And uh, by the way, if you're a member of the family, that doesn't mean you're a host. You could be an employee. You could be a part time employee. You could be uh, an employee owner of Maximum Fun. You could be a listener member, like whoever Matthew is waiting there in the waiting room so patiently. Hi, Matthew. We'll, we'll say hi in a minute. Uh, or you can just be a listener non member. You could be a listener non-member and just put up a sign going, I don't think I should join. Convince me otherwise. Debate me. Oh, no. No, let's keep it friendly, shall we? Uh, by the way, Llama in the chat, do I need to ban anybody? Is any, everything good in the chat? Let me know, Llama. Okay. Another radio professional <laughs> joins us from Brooklyn, Dan McCoy of the Flophouse. You know, my second, my second paycheck uh of any kind from comedy was uh, a show on seattle public radio called rewind that john mo uh eventually you were employed by it but i think at the beginning you were just another freelancer when yeah it was oh, my i didn't know you had this radio. Uh, terrestrial radio connection yeah yeah I, did, I didn't know you were affiliated with the rewind that was my first job in radio i was a freelancer then i became a producer and sometimes fill in host and I have no idea how I got hooked up with this. It was just like a friend of a friend. I was coming out of college. I was like, I want to write things. And I got this connection. And so that was uh, following the $60 I got for submitting something to Modern Humorist online when that right. was wow. uh, a thing. So Did you write sketches for Rewind? Uh, I think that there were two sketches that I wrote that got on there. There was some my fair lady thing about uh re- re- real real trenchant satire about the uh about how uh, I, I think bush uh pronounced uh n- nuclear nuclear uh just you know really got him yeah <laughs> i think it was Ripped it was my work up. yeah <laughs> yeah but uh no i i i was like who is this john mo who 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 seems to be getting so many more <laughs> sketches on the air and yeah, now yeah, that, was, yeah. that, that was uh that was a lot of fun that show john yeah. mo very memorable name two first names i love it yep fits on a, a personalized license plate which do i do have van- do you have a vanity plate i don't know but i always know that i could oh 
What's Dan McCoy is probably pretty close too, actually. Dan Dan McCoy is a great name. Great name for radio. Great name for podcasts. Great name for life. Great name for a great guy. <laughs> Thank you. You know, everyone who doesn't know, Dan McCoy is one of the famous great guys. <laughs> He's one one of the tri hosts of the incredible Max Fun podcast, The Flop House, which is a podcast about terrible movies or movies that did not perform well. Let's say at the box office, right? What would you say? Yeah, I, uh, the longer we've been doing the podcast, the harder I have uh, a time describing the show to people because the more guilty I feel about the idea of just outright making fun of someone else's work. So we try and make it clear that these are films that have been either rejected commercially or critically, and we're going to see what we think about them, and we're going to make jokes along the way, but we try not to be mean about it. Do you know what would be a great movie to cover on the flop house if you've not done already you probably have uh well we'll see it's called john carpenter's the thing <laughs> just try to get me angry why would that make you angry are you a thing well are you, i'm not a thing are you a thing you might be the I thing mean, john let me let's take a little uh let's take a little field trip over here oh to, field trip to time wall. Yeah, we got some let's see how do we and that's the thing it's not just a the thing. thing it is the thing correct i yeah. mean there, yeah there's a wonderful, that's an article there's a wonderful poster for the thing by john carpenter yeah and and uh but you but one of the one of the things i learned about the thing is that it was a flop i didn't know that yeah it was and it was a big old flop commercially and critically critical critics at the time were like this is just you know like people looked back at the thing from another world the christian nyby slash howard hawks movie and they're like oh you're remaking a classic you can't do this it's just gross out effects and it's only in retrospect that became have you covered the thing on the flop house podcast no nor have we covered the remake of the thing starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead, which would be more in our purview, probably. But I think that you could do a great. It could be a great uh, double feature. And mm -hmm. I, I did not understand until relatively recently just how critically loathed the thing was, which is yeah. bananas. Given that it is a obvious cinematic masterpiece, there is not came a out... thing wrong with the thing. <laughs> it came out around the same time as ET. And I think that people wanted friendly aliens. I, I, it, to me, it is the closest example that I can, that, that resonates with me to some kind of mass hysteria, a complete, a complete sort of like population wide agreement to misunderstand what's happening. Can I, can I propose two uh, crossover films that I think need to be made? Yeah. Do the right the thing. No, here we go. <laughs> it's like rewind all over again. And that the thing you do. <laughs> I think I think uh, I think that's a great idea. Both of those would, are great ideas. I would watch those films. That the thing you do. Yeah, they're just wondering which member of the wonders has been taken over by <laughs> some sort of alien creature. Uh, hey, we've got, uh, we got some listeners. Do you want to talk to some listeners? Yeah, bring them on. All right. Let's, let's see how, let's see how this goes. Here's Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? Just great. Uh, oh, wow. there's something about Mary. There's some, the thing about Mary. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> Write it down. Anyone? Oh, I see some yeah, people. Don't put them in the chat. Put them in, come join the conversation and say, what are some of the, what are some spinoffs of the thing? that we can that we can make crossovers the things uh um, matthew where are you where are you right? broadcasting from it sounds like you're I, at I'm an in, Antarctic, in, uh, Antarctic research I'm, station I'm, I'm a block and a half from central lowry in northeast minneapolis where i've lived since 1993. Oh, and I, right. love it. I love it here in the neighborhood has done nothing but become one of the coolest places in an urban place in the united states in my opinion what can you say um, about that neighborhood john mo matthew's doing some uh some land of a thousand lakes signaling to you that's some you know he knows where you're at he's he's tracking you 
it's a it's a beautiful neighborhood. It's uh, there. I am all about uh, peace and brotherhood between the the two twin cities. I, I've often said that uh, there is a fierce rivalry between Minneapolis and St. Paul, about which only St. Paul is aware. Yeah, yes, that's oh, true of many true. rivalries. I looked for a lot of houses, and when the person I was with at the time and I didn't want to have kids. Minneapolis seemed more interesting. But yes. Otherwise, you could get a more of a house in St. Paul by far. And for raising kids, that's what everyone says. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you a listener member of the Maximum Fund Network, Matthew? Not just yet, but I do buy oh. things. You do buy the thing? What? I have bought, I have bought some things. Uh, I think we um, all have bought some things. We're all trapped yes. in this fucking game. But I'm not. Uh, but I'm. I'm not, not a member. Not of, or I am nothing more than a merch person right now. I appreciate your merch. Your merch perch. But, but let me tell. Uh, let me tell you, man, yeah. because you're being very vulnerable and you're putting yourself on the spot, and I appreciate that. Like we love for when people do their merch perch. It's terrific. It's wonderful. But you know the thing that I always say is: first of all, get the thing out of here. We're trying to do some research in Antarctica. A. <laughs> I don't need this thing around. B, the thing I always say is, <laughs> if you like something and you're able to support it and you want to support it and you want to support it financially, then support it in the way they ask you. Uh, there's a lot of great Judge John Hodgman bumper stickers and stuff. But uh, the way that is really supportive of us is to go to MaximumFund.org slash join. That's all I'm going to say, Matthew. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. You are correct, of course. No, 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 no. Look, everyone's got to do their own the thing. <laughs> everyone's got everyone's got their own the thing going. I'm going to do the right the thing. Okay. Well, if you okay. can, I'm just saying, like, you do what you do, but I'm just, I got to, I got to stay on message, right, John Mo? Yeah. You know, you, you got to always bring it back. It's, it's, uh, it's callbacks. You got to always bring it back. It just, yeah. it just, you know. Watching John Carpenter's The Thing when you're a The Thing, it just feels different. Are yeah. you otherwise fans of John Carpenter? Say it again. Are you otherwise fans of John Carpenter? Of course I'm, I'm a fan of John Carpenter. I love all of the movies, and I love The Thing. It's a masterpiece, right, Dan McCoy? Uh, possibly my favorite. Well, my favorite serious one of his. I also, Big Trouble in Little China is my other personal John Carpenter, Carpenter fave. So, so... <laughs> oddball and also misunderstood in its time but quirky. beloved now quirky dark, dark yeah. star is a favorite of mine as well never ever saw dark star did you ever dark see star dark star, star was, a, a, was a kind of a, a student project of theirs with dan o'bannon right it's dan o'bannon and john carpenter doing this hilarious <clears throat> extremely low budget film did dan o'bannon that, uh, write alien is that what i'm remembering yes. yeah. right yeah, the, the the whole crew who was doing a lot of the art and stuff in Hodorowsky's aborted project ended up coming along and doing Alien, and a lot of that art, including the H.R. Giger stuff, all that followed on into Alien. Yeah. Now you're so, talking yeah. about Hodorowsky's Dune. My yeah, favorite. which I think a lot of people are now happy didn't get made because of oh, it would be good. terrible. It would be terrible. The best version of that movie is the documentary about it. And <laughs> for those who don't know... It Al is. Alejandro Hodorowski is a, a director. What what was the thing that the the sort of wacky western psychedelic western they directed? The Holy Mountain. Uh, he did uh, Santa Sangre. Uh, I can't think of other another ones one. right now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. My favorite part of that is like he he wanted to make Dune, and he came up with this wild, massive five thousand page storyboard book, and he was going to have like Mick Jagger in it. And he was going to cast his own son as Paul Atreides, this wild psychedelic vanity project. And he hired H.R. Giger, who designed the Alien and Alien and some of the other stuff in there, to design all this weird psychosexual, you know, stuff. And then uh, it didn't get made. And he's mad about it in the documentary. And he's like, "And why didn't it get made? Because of money? Because of this?" And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out his money. Because because of this filthy stuff, money. And he's like, he's holding five thousand dollars in his hand. <laughs> he's totally like he totally loves money el topo i think is the one you were looking for john el, el topo yeah, el topo is right meanwhile john mo's mixing up in the chat check this out i'm glad emma stone won for pour the things <laughs> that's pretty good that's pretty good i love it well matthew thank you for joining us and saying hello 
Do you have any specific questions that you would like to ask me, John Moe or Dan McCoy? Uh, I, oh, um, yes. Uh, what do you think of the, I assume you guys know the MST3K Rift Tracks and Mads folks. Well, yes. yeah, I mean, Elliot Kalen of the Flophouse was the head writer of one of the newer yeah. seasons of uh, MST3K. And, and, uh, and I'm just been such a huge fan since uh, UHF days that I wanted to, 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 to chime in with, the, I guess, what would be a question? Do you what know that there's, a a guy, that there's a guy trying to revolutionize the technology of the U.S. military who's naming most of his stuff after Tolkien things? I did not know that, Matthew. It's very strange and interesting. He's the guy who invented the Oculus. Okay. And his name is, and you're not going to believe this, his name is Logan Lucky, and he has a mullet and wears Hawaiian shirts and... I do believe it. I believe he's going to be a military industrial complex billionaire. Only thing I don't believe is why would he call it the Oculus instead of the Orculus, right? See you later, Matthew. <laughs> Got him. I had to walk out on that. Yeah, that was a high note. Orculus. Because it's named after Tolkien. I'm going to say this. I think the thing is better than the alien. How about that? What do you think about that, Dan McCoy? Uh, I, I think I personally... I don't really think that. Enjoy. Okay. The I mean, the, better than the Beatles. I was playing with that. <laughs> I was playing with it. I was playing with that idea for a minute. I think there's yeah. an argument to be made. I'm not sure that I would win it. Yeah. I, I mean, Alien is just so, if you'll forgive me, Alien. Like, it, it is truly Alien. It, 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 I, don't, I don't forgive you. I don't think there's anything along those lines that has done such a good job at just presenting something that looks so new and weird. Yeah, I suppose. But also David Lynch's Dune. Weird. Here's a dude named Liam. Hi, Liam. Hello. Welcome to the Max Fun family meeting. Thank you. Are you a member of the Max Fun family as a, either a podcast host, a employee, staff member, or listener? I'm a listener. I'm a listener member. My, my sister and I have have birthdays that are close by so we just got each other reciprocal memberships crisscross first time yeah now does this gesture cause anything to gesture. happen <laughs> oh balloons or something yeah because have you noticed this on ios okay. products if you make things yeah right jazz hands <laughs> does that do anything i mean the only ones that i've been able to discover so far liam are peace sign is balloons right balloons please thank you do you have to say balloons please when... No, <laughs> you know what I, you know what I'm doing when I do that, and I, I have to cop to this. Speaking of YouTube, John Moe and Dan McCoy, oh yeah, hearts that does a thing. Hearts gives you hearts. Mm, what? Yeah, how about that? I can't do it. I mean, you, it only happens if you have a human heart. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, they're also saying there are lasers. Miss Europa was saying that that when I say balloons, please, I'm 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 copying a guy on YouTube named Jamie who has a channel called Anti Chef, which Dan, you as a you as a very proficient home cook, mm. you really enjoy. I think. Uh, um, are you familiar with this YouTube channel? An Anti Chef. Anti Chef. Anti Chef. No. Well, look at that. I mean, look, I'm not trying to raise money for that guy. He's got a Patreon. We don't do Patreon. We do Max Fun Drive, maximumfun.org slash join. Well, since you gave me uh, the opening, to, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to say that uh, my co host, Stuart Wellington, on his Twitch channel tomorrow night, we're going to do a, a cooking stream together. Oh, there we so. go. There we go. That's Max Fun. See, John Moe, we're bringing it back. We're circling it around. Bring it around. Bring it around. This is a great time to go visit MaximumFun.org slash join to support the Flophouse and Depression Mode, Judge John Hodgman, and or any of the Max Fun podcasts that you know and love. And so Stuart Wellington's Twitch channel is what? Uh, I believe it's Stuart L. Wellington on Twitch. Okay. Or, or his middle name, Linton, a middle name that I had never heard before I met Stuart. Linton, really? Yeah, with an E. L L Linton. I can't, I, you know me, I can't do the vo different vowel sounds. <laughs> the two things the I know about Dan, three things I know about Dan McCoy. Loves the thing, has no human heart, can't do vowel sounds. <laughs> uh, it's a Midwestern what accent. Gonna, what are you going to, what are you going to cook? Uh, I think we're going to do a stir fry this time. 
I, with, this time, how, what have I been missing? Uh, the previous Max Fun drives, we d- we've done some other one. I did uh, pa- uh, pasta. Uh, who's uh, Am- 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 Amatriciana, yeah. the the Bucatini Amatriciana. We did uh, a Tuscan white bean soup, and I did sort of a a Vietnamese inspired pork bowl. You know what? Why am I why am I boosting this YouTube guy with an incredible Patreon? Okay, when it's my the wife, next fun drive. And Dan my wife is in the here. chat. She says there's no L in the Twitch, just Stuart Wellington. So thank you for looking uh, at. Okay, well, all right. This is Aud- Audrey, <laughs> Dan's wife, and a whole human being in her own right, saying the Twitch stream is just Stuart Wellington. What time are you doing it tomorrow? Uh, this is a thing that I should know, and I have it on the calendar, and it is 8 p.m. 8 Eastern. P- 8 p.m. Hang on, we got a very we got a we got a VIP VIP Max Fun family member here, VIP coming in, rolling in, make way, move over, Liam, it's Jesse Thorne, founder hey, of the Maximum Fun Network. How's what going, a pals? sunny scene you present, wow. Jesse Thorne. Wow, I yeah. thought that was a still photograph, but then he started talking. Greetings from the bootleg dog park. You look like an incredibly charismatic bumblebee, <laughs> about to just pollinate the god or whatever damn world it was a delight to see you i'm gonna put you in solo mode for a second so people can see this nope that's max that's dan mccoy what happened it's just like dan i put you in solo mode there we go boink look at that short sleeve tog what is that from what's that shirt from that's a rugby shirt this i don't really look like a bumblebee i look more like a guy who's about to play rugby for one of the many better university of california campuses that i didn't get into yeah, you look like a golden bear. That's you're right. Absolutely. What's that? Dog barking? Yeah, that's my dog barking. What that dog? There's an incredible bark. He goes, whoop, 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 whoop. Let me see. Him. I told you I'm at the dog park. Hey, Junior, here. Junior, here. Good boy. Good boy. Look at. Whoa. Whoa. Look at this. Whoa. Look at this guy. Yay, Junior. Oh, Junior's here. You know, I want to tell Junior something, and I hope you'll relay this to him because I know yeah. you're, you have your earphones in. Yeah. On Thursday at noon, Thursday, day after tomorrow at noon, I'm returning with Get Your Pets. So if Junior oh, wow. wants to see some other incredible pets and cats and dogs, uh, this is the time to, to, for Junior to, to zoom in. Not Zoom, sorry, StreamYard in or YouTube channel in. And I'm going to be reading this book, The Sopping Thursday, featuring a dog <laughs> by Edward Gorey. One of the rare Edward Gorey dog books, right, Dan? He liked cats. Sorry, sorry, I was muted. I do like cats, but since you gave me finally, uh, I, I just want to make sure. I gave you the end. A, give me the end. Uh, we were talking about Edward Gorey the other time we we're here. I wanted to show you this Uh-oh. thing that Audrey Whoa. previously mentioned got for me. Uh, it's the uh, it's Edward Gorey's uh, design for the Dracula play. Uh, it, it, and it, if you rotate it, it's other sets. Uh, all the characters have fallen over because of the earthquake of me moving it. Uh, but this is the three sets for his, uh, the production that he designed the thing for. Yeah. And Edward, little characters. Edward Gorey uh, de- uh, designed the sets for the 1977 Broadway adaptation of the play <laughs> Dracula. Sorry about this, Jesse, but we have to talk about it because it's just facts. It's just it's just history. This you know is what great. I'm no, it's important to talk about Edward Gorey. We're just talking about history here. It's just not we're just not endorsing anything. We're just talking about the history of the play Dracula and Edward Go- Edward Gorey designed the sets for it and uh, and won a uh, won a Tony Award, which I believe is a very hot award in the theater world, right, Liam? I, I think one of the t- top five for sure. <laughs> there was there's, there's there's the Drama Desk Awards. Yep. There's the o, Louise Ortel Awards. There's the Obie Awards. There's the Outer Critics Circle Awards. There's the Judge John Hodgman Off Broadways. The Grammys and the Grammys sure. and the things, right? Things. <laughs> the thing. Awards. There's the things. C- cable Ace. The Cable Ace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the Webbies also. Webbies. Edward yeah. Gorey never won a Webby. Robbed. He did win Best Kiss in the MTV Movie Awards. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Do you want to see a really kissable dude? Let me show you. 
I know that I've shown this a lot, but I got to put this back up on the screen. Did I share with you the photo of Edward Gorey walking down New York City Street, Jesse Thorne? The guy that, looked unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Okay. Yeah, I got I just got to put this up again, just for a second, just for a super jumbo. Like, boink. Oh. What, what a winner. Wow. What a what a monarch of 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 the of New York City and the whole world. And yeah, I'd kiss him. Santa, what are you doing? <laughs> I love the onlookers are just they can't believe they can't believe it. They can't believe it. I know we've been here before everybody, but I gotta go. I, so every Boxy now and then I gotta look at this photo. And I gotta look at this photo and remind myself this is how you rule. This is how <laughs> I win. This is how you rule. If you just be, if you know yourself, this is what we're talking about, John Moe. It's yep. hard to know what makes you truly happy. You have to really tune into yourself. Yep. You have to filter out a lot of like, I should be happy with this. Why am I not happy with that? My parents told me I should feel happy with this. My teachers told me I should feel happy with this. Edward Gore is like, you know what makes me happy? Wearing this scarf. Yep. Wearing this scarf and this beard and and the and the and these incredible well you can't see his rings but he usually wears these big rings and these whatever and drawing funny pictures and talking about the death of the imaginary death of cartoon victorian children wearing my coat from my south pole expedition walking down the street hey dan mccoy you're an illustrator right you, you, sure all right okay bear with me here this is gonna all right there we go you're well, I'll start this again. Hey, Dan McCoy, you're an illustrator, right? Yeah. You're a good illustrator. You ever do any Edward Gorey pastiche? Uh, I, I did. I showed it uh, last time, but I should call it up again if uh, yeah, people yeah, are yeah. curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it may take a moment, so. Take your time, Dan. We got well, nothing I mean, time. <laughs> I, mean, I, oh, I put him on the I put him on the spot. I like, expected thanks, uh, everyone to fake, vamp once I you, fake Denise. Well, let me just say thank you to fake Denise. Just bought a gift membership. Thanks for the Max Fun Family Meetings. You're welcome. Thank you, fake Denise. Thank it's really you, great fake to Denise. see you. And real Denise. Uh, <laughs> Brent Terry uh, over on the YouTube channel says, as a dude with a complicated relationship with a receding hairline, I really love this dude's style. I think that's Edward Gorey's style, but it could be any of our style, pretty much, except for Liam. Liam's got a full head of hair. No, Seems man. like a beard might be the answer. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. I think the answer is a short sleeve rugby shirt. Everybody agrees. Yeah. I mean, you, I, I mean, honestly. Dan's showing his picture, John. Show oh, okay. Fine. Here I got it. It's a. Yeah, uh, that's good. A little categories. Yeah. cartoon. So here's what I'm saying, Dan. Remember how Wait, we were talking. That's like some kind of Dan McCoy joke. Yeah. <laughs> Remember how we were talking about, uh, we were talking to that other guy, Matthew, about merch? Yeah. And he, and he was like, I'm not a member, but I buy the merch. And I'm like, we like your merch perch, but please become a member. Right. I did just think of some merch that is really good. And Dan, you, you can make it happen. No one is better. No one is better situated than to make this happen. Because someone was talking about how Edward Gorey looked like uh, he was tromping around Antarctica. How about a comic? Edward Gorey's The Thing. Oh. That, Man, that right? sounds pretty solid. That right? sounds pretty solid. Uh, you just did a comic adaptation of The Thing in the style of Edward Gorey. You know... Uh, and we could sell it and it, would, and it would be... And everyone would love it, but we wouldn't sell it to Matthew because he's not a member. No. Audrey texted me. She, she keeps me on on point to remind like now that i've shown the drawings to remind people that uh one of the flop houses stretch goals is if we hit 2000 upgrading or new members uh we're doing a raffle as we've done in previous years and one of the things is uh people can get commissioned drawings from me if they're interested in it so if they're picked so pick me i'm a pick me guy make <laughs> edward Gorey's the thing that's all i'm asking for now someone told me to throw double uh oh there we go oh, wow how about that that's something today's tom sawyer liam where are you calling from by the way uh new never. haven connecticut what the what never heard of it what are you doing there liam i'm a i'm a graduate student at yale 
at Yale University? At this Yale is an accredited four-year university in Southern yes. Connecticut. Known as the UC Santa Cruz of the East. That's right. The Golden Bears, the famous Yale Golden Bears. Uh, went all the way. Hey, Jesse Thorne, do you know what happened in sports? No, what happened? Yale beat Auburn in the March Madness tournament and then got eliminated by San Diego something. Oh. Yeah. But, but it was a real Cinderella story for Yale to even make the tournament and to beat Auburn. SDSU, San Diego something university? That's right. That's, what it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly Oh, somethings. Uh, uh, you're listening in New Haven and you're a member? Yes, that's that makes great. me very that makes me very happy. You ever go over to Patricia's for eggs? Uh, no, I don't. I go to the pantry. The pantry's great. Yeah, of so course the pantry's great. The <laughs> pantry's terrific. I'm telling you to go to Patricia's. I'll go. I'm just not sure. One Ol- time, just one Ol- time. Olmo is the other the other breakfast spot. I'd say that's really taken over. I'm giving the recommendations okay. here, yeah, Liam. <laughs> yeah. Your dad. I'm your dad, and I'm telling you, Patricia's been making. Patricia and her family have been running that diner since I was younger than you. And it's a real, it's a real place. I really like it a lot. I'll go first thing. Where's your favorite place to get breakfast? We'll go around the horn and then we're going to add some people to the, to the mix here. John Which way Mo. are we going around the horn? I'm starting with John Mo. Uh, I'll go with the Colossal Cafe on Grand Avenue in St. Paul because I can walk there. What do you like to get there? Uh, I like to get a nice omelet, and I like to really savor their toast. Somehow their toast is better than other people's toast. Somehow their toast. What's the name of the place again? The Colossal Cafe. Colossal Cafe. It's not that, that big. That reminds me of my my first roommate and very dear friend, Adam Sachs. When, you know, when we first moved to New York 30 years ago, we were trying to come up with some way that we could ever make a living in this world. And his concept was he was going to start uh, a donut place called Huge Donuts. They were going to be very large. Mm-hmm. And the motto was going to be Huge Donuts. If they're not large, they're not huge. And uh, he, he is now he is now a, a famous food writer and food editor and food consultant. But I, you may not know this, everybody. I'm a podcaster for the mm. Maximum Fun Podcast Network. And this is our Max Fun Drive, and these are some of our friends from Max Fun. I'm going to add Richard P. and Dan Grubb. Uh, two users are in the stream with audio only. Put on your cameras, Richard P. and Dan Grubb. There's Dan Grubb. I liked you liked my name on a. Uh, there's Richard P. I liked what? Let's see. I'm going to put you in solo layout here. Like my name on a song I sent him. What? Tell me what you're talking about. Sure. Uh, uh, I. I just finished my lunch break, so excuse oh. me while I close a door. I was going to say, Dan, Dan Grubb is busy trying to find the stage in Cleveland, Ohio. Is <laughs> final oh, suddenly in an Aaron Sorkin show. Yeah, Let's walk and talk, people. I need, seven, I need 17 drafts of this speech by 2 o'clock right now. Um, <laughs> hi, yeah, uh, it was maybe last spring. <clears throat> uh, or it was probably last summer because I think that Joel Mann was involved. But uh, yeah. there was some sort of something about something or other on my flapjacks. Uh, Y'all were kicking that around on Judge John Hodgman. Oh, yeah, that sort of rings a bell. And you said if anyone uh, had a song for it. And I think someone maybe wrote in with a... Uh, an instrumental banjo version of it or something. And then uh, I wrote some lyrics yeah. that I sang poorly a cappella into my phone mic. Garlic, sent, garlic on my flap steak, it's called. Flap steak, not flap jack. That's, That's right. what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, when you said it, you uh, you said Dan Grubb. I like that. This name. was January 30, 2021. Dan Grubb just found it. It's very searchable, by the way. Dan wow. Grubb. Was it three years ago? My goodness. Yeah, three years ago. And wow. uh, I don't know how I can play this. Let me see if I can. Hang on a second. Oh, yeah, I might. Let me see what happens here. All right, now I'm over here again. I'm going to try to share <laughs> share this window. Uh, oh, boy. I know, I'm afraid. Crowded that room. I'm afraid that it's. I'm going to show you something that I shouldn't show you. Oh, yeah, don't show that the, that series of pictures I sent in. 
No, I mean to say that's just for you and me, John. I don't want you to see my inbox, everybody. I just want to... <laughs> hey, John, I gotta go record some things, but it was oh, okay. so lovely. Yeah, that's, hey, that's I apologize for keeping you, John Mo. Thank you very much. For Not being at here. all. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you, everybody. And uh, and Jesse and Thank Dan, you, if you gotta take off or anyone needs to take off, go for it. There goes John Mo. John Mo is the host of Depression Mode <laughs> and Sleeping with Celebrities on the Maximum Fun uh, Podcast Network. This is the Max Fun Drive. I'm going to be uh, meeting with other members of the Max Fun family for a little bit longer. We've got Dan, listener Dan, listener Richard, ris- listener Liam, and co-host of the Flophouse, Dan uh, McCoy, and uh, Jesse Thorne, founder of the Podcast Network. Jesse, I'm going to see if I can play Dan Grubb's little song here. So tell everyone about the Max Fun Drive for, for a little second. Tell them how they can help out. Well, for the past 15 years or so, the primary thing that has supported Maximum Fun is membership. So that means people who listen to our shows or enjoy the stuff that we make and think that it is worth paying for, uh, just like it might be worth paying for those uh, those slices of toast at the Colossal Cafe. Uh, and in fact, the price that we ask you to pay is probably about the same as a couple of slices of toast at the Colossal Cafe. Starts at five bucks a month, and when you join, you get not just that great feeling of knowing that you're part of Maximum Fun, but also uh, access to a huge Trevor treasure trove of members-only bonus content, uh, including this year, John and I did the second installment of a show called Kinding Them with Kindness. Uh, this one is called Kinding Them with Kindness 2, Look Who's Kinding Now. Uh, it's a Richard Kind Advice podcast, the only podcast where fierce character actor who happens to be funny, Richard Kind, tells you how to live your life uh, and also shares anecdotes about Stephen Sondheim. Um, Dan, what, what have you made, uh, Dan McCoy, that is, what have you guys made for bonus content this year? Uh, well, this year, what's on there already is our uh, live show that we did in Los Angeles, where we talked about Spawn from 1997, uh, a truly misbegotten in a lot of ways, uh, early superhero movie. But later on in the year, we're going to do a deep dive into the schlock uh, filmography of Graydon Clark. We're going to talk about Joy Six, his 80s sex comedy set in a video game arcade. We're going to talk about uh, The Forbidden Dance, uh, one of two movies that came out in 1990 about the Lombada. This is the one not just called Lombada. <laughs> it's called The Forbidden Dance. That was because Golan and Globus split, and they both decided to go ahead with the Lombada movie. Uh, and then there's another one uh, that I can't remember. It's a, it, it, it looks... Uh, utterly cheesy but um yeah we're, that's we're what we're gonna be exploring similar. we're doing something similar for jordan jesse go which is my daughter grace is like a retro gaming enthusiast and she also loves terrible movies it's one of the reasons dan that she likes your co-host elliot better than me and um grace has recently become obsessed with terrible licensed video games uh sometimes good sometimes bad movies that have been turned into awful games uh, so she chose six games for us to play, all based on weird licenses. Um, we've already played both the Nintendo and Super Nintendo versions of Wayne's World, uh, which also had a PC adventure game, apparently. But the Nintendo and Super Nintendo games are both like platformer games that are based on the same outline. So like they each have, I think it's five or six levels and all the levels have the same theme but the gameplay and content other than that is completely different on both games because they were developed by two different companies at the same time without talking to each other um so in one of the games in one of the games garth has a laser gun that he uses to shoot zombies and ninjas uh in the other game wayne shoots like uh electrical blasts out of his sweet guitar both games are truly execrable um she's also going to make us play the nintendo version of cool world uh speaking of misbegotten films uh she's really excited about the fact that nintendo made you keep things family friendly and the whole point of cool world was that it was very horny um (laughs) yes so uh we're gonna play that we're gonna play shaq fu 
Uh, Shaquille O'Neal wanted to have his own video game, but did not want to have a basketball game. So he created a fighting game uh, where you can be Shaq. Uh, we're going to play a Contra game that has nothing to do with Contra. They just bought a license to call it a Contra game. Uh, we're, we're going to play. Uh, it is like a it is a real cavalcade of nightmares is is how I would describe what we're going to play. The, the only thing we're not going to play is Alf for the Atari, but my daughter wants to assure everyone that she has two copies of that. Why aren't you going to play Alf? I mean, for not the Alf. Atari. Uh, uh, e. T. Oh, E. T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. gladly play Alf for the Atari. I've She's got... obsessed with Alf too, so I've right. watched a lot of Alf lately. Alf's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. Can I uh, can I make a pitch for the Contra title? Would love to hear it. Here comes here comes Dan Grubb flying in with a pitch for Contra. Uh, the one that's not a Contra game, uh, Contra Deceptive. Oh, so we're playing a different one that's not a Contra game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they were just passing out Contra hither and yon, like some kind of Oliver North. Oh, um, but. Uh, yeah, it, we're playing Superman 64, which apparently is just like a game where you fly Superman through rings. Yeah. Uh, my daughter really... Very comics is, accurate. Yeah, my daughter is really clear on the fact that we need to play the U.S. version, not the European version, because the controls on the U.S. version are more frustrating. What about ALF for the Sega Master System, says Zeph on BB84? Uh, I would love to play ALF for the right. Sega Master System. Yeah, get... Get my boy some ALF cartridges, everybody. But if hey. you become a member by going to MaximumFun.org slash join, you will not only get those over the course of the year. We, we've already posted uh, the Wayne's World episode. Jordan and I will also be streaming, playing those games. It will be our first experience as, as Twitch streamers. Um, and you can just watch us get uh, nightmarishly frustrated in real time. And I want to point out that Kate, Kate uh, Littleton in the chat mentioned that we're already today on Tuesday at 9,700 some odd new and upgrading members on MaximumFun.org slash join. That's network wide. That is 50 within the past hour, more than 50 wow. within the past hour. So I think it's all down to you fine folks in the chat and everybody going to MaximumFun.org slash join. Uh, I think it makes it very, very likely that we're going to hit that 10,000 benchmark before we even officially announce it tomorrow when the when this week's podcast drops the judge john hodgkin podcast so i am very confident in announcing that with your support at maximumfund.org slash join jordan morris and i me and my friend jordan morris <laughs> are going to be eating some cheese live on this stream friday <laughs> at 1 p.m shooting the breeze live spiciest cheeses in the world we're going to be hurting so bad Dan yeah, you're going to be eating nightmare cheeses. Not nightmare cheese. Cheeses. We're talking about ghost pepper cheese, Carolina Reaper cheese. We're talking about uh, a cheddar cheese called Dragon Breath. It's all coming to us via, guess what, mail order. We'll be eating mail order cheese and hurting our hurting our souls. But you look, won't you won't believe this. I, I I work at a fancy place, and I just finished my salad bar lunch, and they actually had Dragon's Breath cheese at the salad bar. Dan. Uh, I swear to God. Dan Grubb? Yeah. I believe you. <laughs> Dan I works at the Four Seasons in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work at uh, Cheese HQ. When it comes to claims about food, uh, when it comes to claims about food, I stand with Grubb. That's how I've always said it. I always said I stand with Grubb. Hey, Dan Grubb. Yes, uh, sir. Speaking of food and songs, Garlic on My Flap Steak, I can't play it in this format so uh, that's okay but, but we did play it on the did we play it on the podcast yeah you played it at the very end of if i sent it in january of 2021 it must have been january or february of 2021 so one of those well go have, go back and listen to it it was a great it was a great moment in podcast yeah. history garlic on my flap steak uh, yeah lots I, of I mean, us I, were sending stuff my baby's then. gonna make me a flap steak just you wait and see my baby's going to make me a flap steak special just for me. Going to mince all that garlic up and not a teaspoon, but a whole dang cup. So when I eat my baby's flap stack, flap steak, Dracula's won't bother me. That's just the, that's just the line. Oh, we lost Dan McCoy, but that's okay. Cause we got another, 
Maximum Fun host to add. It's Alex Schmidt. Hi, Alex. Hey, hey Alex. How's Hello. It going? It's Hooray. good. I, I just heard a series of Dracula tips, and I want as many as I can get. <laughs> we oh, are, we doing a, are we doing a secret, secretly incredibly fascinating about Draculas? <laughs> If only. They're too obviously incredibly fascinating. If you don't do know, yeah, yeah. if you don't know, and Richard, I see you. I just want you to know, Alex, I, speaking of Draculas, yeah. the chat is going bananas over Richard's wallpaper. And they want to know, when did... I, Ooh. Yeah. And a curtain. Is that a yeah. curtain? Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's talking about the Haunted Mansion vibe that Richard is bringing to this live stream. And Stacy's out there going, when did, uh, when did uh, Anton LaVey join the chat? So Richard, I can see you. So I know you're not a Dracula. But we're just going to visit with Alex for a minute here. And then we're going to figure out what your whole story is. Alex Schmidt is the co-host of the incredible podcast, Secretly Incredibly Fascinating, which recently joined the Max Fun Network. And we're so well. How long ago was it since you joined up with our with our Motley crew? Yeah, like a tiny bit over a year. When we joined, it was right before the previous drive. So we basically sent the, spent the drive saying, "Yes, this is amazing." That was it. We were just thrilled. Yeah. Oh, wonderful! So, and do you know Liam yeah. and Dan Grove? Junior. I hi guys. <laughs> they're, just listen, you. they're just listener, they're just listener. They're just listener members. I know, I know Jesse's dog is named Junior, but for some reason yeah. I responded in my head. Yeah. I was like, what? what's that? It doesn't... What's that, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, what is some, we, I was on that program with you and we covered the topic yeah. of beavers. Wonderful, Anna. Yeah. And, and once the before animal. about doorknobs as well, which is very nice of you as well. Because Do the, the first too. time I brought you on, I, I was like, and it's a show about doorknobs and you showed up, which was very kind. Because uh, that, that's what we do. We take something people think is ordinary and get into why it's amazing. But yeah, the, from why, the pitch I, I dare, point, it's I dare like say, mm. you get into some, you pick something that sounds very ordinary, like doorknobs or beavers, and you explain why they are secretly incredibly fascinating, which is the name of the podcast. Perfectly put. That's how I tie yeah. it together. What are some of the <laughs> other, what are some of the topics we got coming up on the on the podcast that we can listen to? Yeah, we I get only people on the stream no the next one coming out is about clouds and i clouds. think it turned out fantastic yeah and then we put out one yesterday that we had ross blotcher on he was very nice to come join me and katie and we did one about the dollar sign just what? that symbol the whole history of it where it came from it's mostly theories we don't totally know it, it was very fun look yeah. at this kate littleton's right there in the chat talking about i never knew the dollar sign got so interesting and has so much lore so I there kate. you go everyone should go ahead and listen yeah. to that podcast the best way to find all the Maximum Fun podcasts are MaximumFun.org. But before you get over there, won't you go to MaximumFun.org slash join first? I mean, that would be terrific. Become a member and support the podcast that you, that you know or don't know yet. If you're discovering some new podcast today, you're going to be like, wow, this bench is deep. And that's a sports reference. Speaking of joining, some new dogs have joined my dog at the dog park. So as a responsible pet owner... I will be engaging with them rather than you guys, but I hope everyone will go to MaximumFun.org slash join. It's been so nice to see everybody, uh, especially you, Richard. And uh, yeah, I'm always happy to see you, Richard. And Not Jesse, so much you, Liam, middle for you, Dan. And Jesse, I'm going to see you here back on the stream tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, Californian time, 4 p.m. my time, for a segment that we're calling Judge Jesse Thorne. What? uh have we turned the universe on its head or something uh what i guess we'll have to solve that mystery tomorrow bye jesse thank you so much oh boy i can't believe it see i can't believe it what <laughs> yeah my God, <laughs> uh, all right alex we gotta we gotta talk to richard liam dan do you agree we gotta talk to richard for a second yeah, yeah. All right. i actually also need to go away but, all right dan uh, thanks for see you. thanks for letting me hop on this was a delight and, absolutely uh, uh sith love that show recently converted to uh, oh, well, thank it's you. gone now but uh the flop house a recent uh convert to that and just i added them to my membership uh thank you. list yesterday thank uh, you so much that's wonderful yeah. 
big, big, big yeah, fan thanks. of the whole the whole operation as well as a whole bunch of the shows. It so is a whole all. operation over there at Max Fun HQ and the American Cement Building. I'll tell you, and uh, couldn't exist without your support, Dan Grubb. And I'm sorry you never got to hear that personal thank you that I was trying to give you because you had to go back to your salad bar or whatever. Liam, you good to hang out for a minute longer? I'm a grad student. I got. What are you studying? What are you studying in graduate school? Uh, I study birds, surrounded by birds. I'm an evolutionary biologist. Whoa. Stuff, yeah. Okay. I was hearing a bird chirping, and I believe some people worried or were curious whether or not Richard, you had a bird in your uh, in your in your parlor there. And, yeah. Uh, in in the grimoire there. Yeah. Opened it up. What do you Show got? Us. Do you have a raven or a vulture back there, or was that just Jesse Thorne's park bird? Richard, are you there? Come in, Richard. Oh, I am here. Yes, hello. Okay, no, hi, I Richard. Think that was a park bird. That was a park bird. Okay. Now, Richard, where are you in the world? Uh, I am in New Brunswick, Canada. New Brunswick, Canada. Is yeah. that a maritime province? Yes or no? That is a maritime province. Yes. We oui or non? We. Oui. We. Oui. Say, uh, say Acadien. Say okay. And where in New Brunswick, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, I'm in, I'm in uh, Charlotte, New Brunswick, which is a tiny village on the beautiful north shore of New Brunswick near the Quebec border. Oh, yeah. You're up there, huh? Wow. Uh, very I've close never... to uh, Quebec Nordique's territory. Well, Quebec City, of course, is where the Quebec Nordiques played until they stopped and they moved to Co Colorado. Very tragic story of extinct hockey. Um, I ought to tell you, maybe I'll come on the secretly incredibly fascinating uh, show sometime, Alex, and talk to you about extinct hockey, the incredibly fascinating sport of extinct hockey. I A lot of what I've learned about it is from your subreddit, so I would love to dive deeper. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for paying attention to that subreddit. I started about three Max Fun drives ago, and I have neglected to update. But uh, there's a nice little community there of extinct hockey fans, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Richard, uh, so say, say, say where you are again. I, wanted, I would just need to see this. Uh, Charlo, New Brunswick, C H A R L O, C H A R L O, New Brunswick, in the beautiful Bay de Chalor. Cool. Oh, wow, look, look at where you are up there. Okay, well, wow. Hang on a second. So yes, yeah, so this is this is way up, no way up north. I it never occurred to me that New Brunswick went this far up. Let me see if I can show, show. Alex and Liam. I'm going to show you where this is. Okay. Let's see yeah, yeah. Show you where this is here. Uh, yeah, there we go. Richard, wow. I do some of. Uh, oh, wow, it's way up there. Uh, well, is it where? I lost it here. Charlo, show it to me. Charlo, oh, I, see, I see the little outline there. Oh, there it yeah. is. Whoop, zoom. Oh. Do you live in the uh, Craig neighborhood? <laughs> Yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, really? I'm sorry. I didn't mean, to, I didn't mean to blow up your spot. I just love there's a, a neighborhood <laughs> called Craig. Uh, I actually, I live in a building that, uh, that people call the Craig Farm. Uh, the Oh, okay. Well, now we've gotten somewhere. Look at this. Charlo <laughs> Airport is right. Building. Yeah, that's exactly right. I don't want to, I don't want to know your direct. You ever get over to Upper Charlo or is that too, too small yeah, that's, for you? Yeah, that's, that's close to me. Yeah, that's, okay. uh, that uh, cafe is the pie shop at the end of my driveway. You're this getting one getting really close. Yeah, you're getting really close oh. to zooming right in on my house. This is a, a new fun Max Fun Drive thing. We find we find our listeners and pinpoint them. <laughs> it's like a little scavenger hunt. Where are they now? There's Craig Road. Uh, all right. Uh, I won't. Rue Kennedy. I don't want to know any more details about where you live. I want to keep it a mystery. <laughs> Although I think I have sort of figured it out. How's the Lumilan Cafe? Let's let's sort for worst, lowest rating. Very disappointed. Best breakfast in Charlotte. Very disappointed. It's not a restaurant. There's just one table inside and two camping tables outside and three mini parking spaces. Plus, it seems like they're taking advantage of tourists. That is that's inaccurate. <laughs> they, have, they have lots of tables inside now. That might have been a uh, that might have been a 2020 review. You know, I hear I hear that a plastic mm. bowl of seafood soup from the fridge goes for twenty dollars Canadian. Is that true or is that a real joke? That that review is a real joke. That, oh wow, here we go. It's getting extremely nice. intense, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, don't be fooled by the beautiful presentation. There are pieces of weird pie in their interior display case. And when we ask what it is, we get cheesecake, but it's not finished. What was in the display? Truly a tourist trap. Exorbitant price for a small insignificant store. Sorry, efforts needed and the reception was poor, it's clear. I won't go back. Wow. 
Le Moulin A Cafe was just burned to the ground by this malcontent. I, but you're saying we shouldn't believe uh, Eric Jimmy. No, no. I've never, this person says they're a local guy. I've never heard of them. Their name is Eric Jimmy. I don't mean to laugh at their name. I just love, I just love <laughs> names that are two first names. Eric Jimmy. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let me ask you a question about, do you, do you ever have any of that famous New Brunswick weird pie? That's a local <laughs> delicacy, right? Weird pie? Yeah, the, the, the otter. Yeah. What would be a local delicacy of New Brunswick, would you say? Uh, what do we got? We got uh, we got lobster. Uh, we got basically everything they got in Maine, but a little bit better. Would you agree? I mean, this is I kind of find New Brunswick, and I hope you take this um, the the right way. It's a little bit of the forgotten child of the Maritimes. So I I just moved here from the big city of Toronto. Uh, my wife has family out here, um, okay. and yeah, I didn't I didn't know any of this was out here. Yeah, I went through I mean, the Canadian school system, and I didn't know I didn't know any of this was here. I mean, this just is a lot. Okay, this is Quebec up here, this part. Yep. Right. I okay, can, this I is the Quebec border. I see. Okay, I got you. So, like, right. I lost Charlo, but I'm. It's fine. Yeah, this is just a lot. You're way up north, north of Prince Edward Island, even. Yep. Yeah, uh, but you know, when people think the Maritimes, and I'm sure. I'm sure you 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 uh, you think about this a lot, Alex Schmidt, right? When you think about the maritime provinces yeah. of Canada, what's the first one that comes to mind? Uh, Nova Scotia, I think. Nova Scotia, me, Prince Edward Island. Okay, yeah, we uh, and we we have like a strong contingent of Atlantic Canada folks in the Sith yeah. Discord, and especially from Nova Scotia. And they have a got, lot of Halifax talk. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Halifax talk. I mean, that's the big town. I mean, it's a yeah. beautiful city, Nova Scotia. I mean, Halifax, Nova Scotia. And then you got Newfoundland and Labrador. Is that the Maritimes too, Richard? Or is that something else, would you say? I'm, I'm, I'm so scared that you asked me. I don't think, I think Newfoundland is its own thing. I think that I once tried to say that that was Maritime Canada. And I think I got uh, eaten alive. I got <laughs> mangé en vive. Do you know, do you know what year Newfoundland joined Canada? Of course I do. As we'll say it at the same time in in the fifties in the nineteen fifties two thousand fifteen nineteen fifties yeah <laughs> uh, that's pretty late it's pretty late Canada in in Canadian terms um, but yeah. we but we haven't talked at all about like I I'm taking from this that New Brunswick it's hard to pin an identity on New Brunswick because you say we have lobsters it's like you know so does Maine so does Nova Scotia or whatever. So does uh, Prince Edward Island, you know, that you're, you're where the lobsters are going right now because it's getting cold. Maine is going to lose our lobsters, unfortunately. But for the most part, it's hard to pin an ID on New Brunswick. People think, I don't know. It's like, I think of it in terms of bowling because there's a, there's a company called New Brunswick, which is a big uh, supplier of bowling supplies to bowling alleys. I don't know if that has anything to do with your province. I think that's just regular Brunswick, isn't it? Maybe it's just regular Brunswick. Yeah. Uh, but I just yeah, like... Does... What, like it's just hard to put an ID on New Brunswick. I guess I'm, 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 you're going to get me in trouble because I'm, like I say, I'm new here. I'm a transplant from the big. City. Yeah, I was hoping that what I was learning today was that New Brunswick is the is the gothest pr province. It's the goth of the Maritimes. <laughs> That's true. That is 100 percent true. Yeah. Here I, we're, we're hang on. We got someone there in the chat. I've lived in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and both Island, Newfoundland, and mainland Labrador. So what makes wow. New Brunswick New Brunswick other than a way to get to Prince Edward Island? That's the way I think. New, Brun New Brunswick is New Brunswick is Canada's only bilingual province, and the the uh, the hmm. French speakers here hmm. really identify as not being French speakers from Quebec. Really? Well, what do you mean it's the only? Bi I thought all of Canada was bilingual by law. The whole country is bilingual by law, but uh, there's the primarily English speaking provinces, primarily French speaking province. New Brunswick is the only official bilingual province. Oh. Official? What do you mean? Do you mean, do you mean that to say that the ratio of English Anglophones to Francophones is closer to 50, 50 in New Brunswick than any other province? Cause that I would absolutely believe. Yes. Yes. Well, you can't, but that's just a demographic thing. You can't make that official. But it's, it's on it's the government. It's all official. Website. Bilingual. It's on the provincial website. That it's the, the, the only uh, bilingual province. Don't make me check the provincial website. <laughs> I do a lot of my work in the Bay of Fundy, and I just want to say it's it's fantastic up there. Uh, the tides in New Brunswick. What? Liam does a lot of his work. I was going to bring up the Bay of Fundy. Yeah. Liam? Graham and Ann. 
this is this is secretly incredibly fascinating. You may already yeah. know all about this, Alex. Tell um, no, tell what them birds about are up the, there. Tell them about the Bay of Fundy. Uh, Bay of Fundy, some of the largest, I think maybe the largest, the tides in the world. Um, yeah. So it's, oh. it's it's completely unbelievable. Um, yeah, beautiful lobster fishing communities, uh, lots of little islands, and really gets overshadowed by the Gulf of Maine. The ba- which is I, a shame. The Bay of Fund. The Bay of Fund. All right. So. <laughs> I don't know if that was the specific comment you you. No, were I was just I, remember, I was just remembering <laughs> something I, that <laughs> our son, our son, our son uh, has a friend who, who who lives in Maine all the time, and um, and when we spend time in Maine, they would hang out, and one day they wanted to uh, they wanted to go take a uh, row a boat over to an island and sleep over on this island. Um, and we were understandably nervous because the sea doesn't care about whether we live or die and, uh, boats go down and islands are full of, um, well, they're just islands. You know what I mean? It was just scary because that probably there were like 15 at the time or whatever. And our son's friend's mom was also like, what are you talking about? You and James can't row over the island. He goes, don't worry. James, that's our son. James knows all about the winds and tides. <laughs> and we're like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. But we all of us as a family has have learned a little bit more about the tides because they're getting bigger. And by bigger, that means the a bigger variation between low tide and high tide. And in in where we are in Maine, the variation on average between low tide and high tide is about nine to 10 feet. A very high tide will be 12 feet higher than, than mean median tide. And, or yeah, that's right. And no, sorry, a, a particularly high tide, what they call a king tide might be about 12 feet higher um, than, than, uh, than low tide. And then wow. a low, low tide would be like negative one or two feet. I think that's basically, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's about 10 to 12 feet difference. So it's intense, you know, like you, you go out to a dock and at high tide, you know, the dock is here and at low tide, the dock is here. And then the thing goes down. Does that make any sense? The Bay of, now by contrast in the Caribbean or the Caribbean, very little variation in terms of depth during tide, during changes of tide. High tide might be here, high, low tide might be here, right? In Maine, it's like this, right? Okay. Bay of Fundy is like this. It's something like 20 feet is my memory. What do you think about that, Liam? Is that about right? I think I'm, all I know is my boots get filled. That's right. why. Hi, hi Magus That's of the Church of Satan, Richard P. is nodding along to that. 20 feet. <laughs> the big tide variation. Yeah. Now. <laughs> is that the first time he's pulled a skull? Because I'm No, he That's had great. it out earlier just to freak okay, out. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Because the other two of you were like, the skull. I, I was like, hold on. <laughs> All right, we're getting some information here about bilingualism in New Brunswick. <laughs> honestly, honestly, let me just say something. We're going to put that up there for a second. But like, I'm so, I'm so excited to do these live streams because I never know what's going to come up. And I would be, honestly be very happy to talk about New Brunswick for the next seven hours. I don't know why. I just find it fascinating, secretly and incredibly. The distinction is mostly, this has to do with bilingualism in New Brunswick, mostly based on what language governments will provide service in. Federal government is bilingual. Quebec provincial government, okay, here we go. Quebec's provincial government, I presume, is French. New Brunswick is like the feds and provides both services in English and in French. All other provinces only require to provide service in English. And Jorbles used to work for the government of British Columbia, so there we go. And then Stacy has this horrible story. I heard an awful story about a man who took a nap under his truck at low tide and never woke up when the tide came in. Thanks for sharing. That one's for you and your grimoire, Richard. And then someone specific, Andrew says, I've heard great things about Sappy Fest in Sackville NB. What do you think that's all about? Sappy Fest, Richard, you got some insight there? Uh, that's a music festival. Uh, that is, oh, that's okay. kind of, that's kind of a Southern New Brunswick thing. <laughs> right. Okay. I got you. <laughs> I thought it might have something to do with maple syrup, but I guess not. So, Richard, let's get back to a lot of unanswered questions here. You're a, you're a Torontonian goth 
recently settled in northern New Brunswick. You brought your skull. You brought your your spooky uh, accoutrement. Are you or are you not a member of L'Eglise du Satan? No, no, I'm no, I'm not. Not I officially. See. All right. Not officially. No. All right. Uh, or you ha you mentioned in the chat that your coworkers describe your house as looking like an escape room. Yes. Well, uh, so this I got I got to move from a tiny office in Toronto to a huge office in New Brunswick. So I've been able to decorate it in the uh, the mad uh, style of my dreams. How would you describe the style of decor? Can um. Well, I I I I I think of it as my style, but like I say, a lot of people describe it as escape yeah. room. That's that's my uh, dogs playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, it's, it's dogs playing poker. It's a, uh -huh. a mirror that I thrifted. Yeah. It's, uh, Oh, it's weird. I can't see or you in that mirror. What's strange? Terrifying, oh, okay, there I can see you in that terrifying moment. advertising mirror. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very nice. That's 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 my uranium glass collection. Uh oh, you have a you have uranium glass? Just one. Just oh, okay. Liam, you got a cat coming through? Let's see that cat real quick. Sorry, Richard. Let's I got see a... it. Whoa, that's a nice cat. Nice Ooh. long cat. What's the name of that cat? What's their name? That is Bowie. Bowie is his name. Nice. nice. Uh, and what do you do? What do you, what kind of line of work are you in there, Richard? Tide measuring? Uh, uh, computer programmer. Computer programmer. And as a Torontonian, as a Toronto goth in New Brunswick, what are your impressions? How um, long ago did you move and what are your, what are your feelings about it? Um, we, 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 we had the opportunity to buy this house from family members during the uh, during the, the 2020s unpleasantness uh, mm -hmm. and did. And we've been sort of going back and forth. Uh, finally made the move late last year. And uh, it's incredible. I recommend I recommend everybody move to a small town. And how and what, what what's Charlotte all about? What's it like? Um, it's it's a tourist town. So like there's Let's say here is a tourist um, trap. That one cafe is serving weird pie for big Incorrect. Bugs. Incorrect. The, pe uh -huh. the pizzas are incredible. The pies are incredible. Uh, Adrian will get mad at me if you say that. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's got it's got it's got winter sports. There's a an Olympic level biathlon club nearby. There's skiing on a on a small mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, there's snowmobiling. There's trails for trails for days and days and days. There's um, a beautiful warm beach. Some months of the year. Oh, well, yeah, by warm, what are we talking about? Not not frozen. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's New Brunswick, New Brunswickian <laughs> definition of warm. Yeah. 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 So Fairly I'll... gentle tides, though, right? Not much change. Just a really chill. Uh, yeah. What yeah. are the tides like up there? <laughs> um, they're 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 mo moderate. 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 Okay. Not Bay of Fundy tides. I don't know. Um, Do you have any uh, insight, either you, Liam, or you, uh, Richard, as to why the Bay of Fundy tides are so dramatic? I think I think it's the just kind of the shape of the the, the shoreline, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I don't know about the winds and the tides. <laughs> the high, all right, Bay of Fundy, the highest tides in the world. Twice every day, the bay fills and empties a billion tons of water during each tide cycle. That's more than the flow of wow. all the world's freshwater rivers combined. The Bay of Fundy has the highest tides. The height of the tide difference ranges from 11 feet along the southwest shore of Nova Scotia and can reach a height of an incredible, now I said it was 20 feet. We're gonna do the prices right on this one. 20 feet is too low. I know it's higher, but the question is, who's going to guess it? Who's going to guess it without going over? 41. For, Richard says 41. I'm writing it down. I'm going to say only a little higher, 24, I'd say. Richard says 41. Alex of Secretly Incredibly Fascinating says 24. 34. 34. Oh, sorry, Liam, what did you say? 24. Oh, you're 24, Liam. I can't wait to find out. It was great. It's yeah. exciting, right? Now, this is based go. on bayoffundy.com slash about slash highest oh. hyphen tides. So, I mean, so it's I, biased I, toward the Bay of Fundy. I mean, I mean, I'm taking, I'm taking this, I'm taking this at, at their, at their word. It's Eric Kenny's website. 
You ready for this? You ready for the review? Hang on. Let's see if anyone's in the chat. All right. Everyone in the chat. We got Alex Schmidt of Secretly Incredibly Fascinating saying that the highest tide, the high tide, the highest tide in Bay of Fundy is 34, 34. Richard, who is in New Brunswick right now, but he's in northern New Brunswick and the Bay of Fundy is in the south. Well, I'll show you where this Bay of Fundy is right now, just so you know. Uh, do I have it? Do I have Where's the map? I gotta share this. Sorry. Richard says 41 feet. Highest tide, 41 feet. And Liam, all the way up there in New Haven, Connecticut, says 24. Just so you know, here's Charlo again. And the Bay of Fundy is down here. Bay of Fundy. It's right there. Oh between St. John, New Brunswick, and this is Nova Scotia. This is the main state line. Here's Grand Manan Island where the, you get good seaweed. Uh, Campobello Island is around here somewhere. I don't know if good is the right, but yeah. Who's saying that? Who's talking that? <laughs> Dulce, do you have a take on Dulce? It's fine, but it's... Do I have I a take on Dulce? <laughs> yeah, I do have a take on Dulce. Mm -hmm. It's God or whatever damn delicious. How dare you? <laughs> What, Liam, I mean, I don't know, Liam. Maybe you're all the way up there in the Bay of Fundy stunning your birds all the time. So you got dulse everywhere, and maybe you're just tired of it. But you're saying you don't like dulse. By the way, people who don't know, dulse is a delicious seaweed that is harvested here. Well, where's my map? Oh. Here on Grand Manan Island. And okay. it's purple. And it and when you buy it, it's, it's kind of, when you, and it's natural state not out right out of the water but after it's been dried it's kind of a, a leathery purple delicious but then when you fry it you ever you ever fry dulse liam yeah oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> i've had this discussion before but yeah with, it, it, with people whom? love it people love it yeah because with it's good with... richard you've had dulse Right, two thumb hold, hold him up, two thumbs up. Fireworks, please. Thank you. Alex Schmidt. I've never had it. You've never had dulse? Yeah. Well, one time, the only time I was in Halifax was more than 20 years ago, and I was writing an article for Men's Journal magazine about maritime pro maritime food or can you know, maritime food and Canadian food. What is it? And there was a fancy chef there in Halifax who opened a Canadian cuisine restaurant. And it was kind of hard to figure out what that is. High, fine dining. He called it maple. It's not there anymore. But I visited him in the <clears> kitchen. He's like, you should try this. And he took some of this dulse seaweed. And I was like, seaweed? What? And he said, it's dulse from Grand Manan Island. And he threw it into a pan with a little bit of oil. And it crackled up. And it became crispy and crunchy and delicious. Pure umami. It's amazing. Everyone should enjoy it. Liam is wrong. Now, that wasn't the question. I apologize, everybody. Kate, Kate, uh, well, hang on. People in the chat, here, here we go again. Now, we know that Liam is wrong about Dulce, but is he <laughs> wrong about the highest tide in the Bay of Fundy? He says 24. Alex says 34. Richard says 41. Tom B says 42. Uh, Specific Andrew says 38. The closest without going over, honestly, was Tom B. But in our chat, Richard, because the answer is 53 feet. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. 53 feet in the Bay, yeah. of, Bay of Fundy. And they got a big reversing falls there too, don't they, Liam? Isn't that something that happens up there? I think that might be up in the... I'm, I'm down there in Graham and Ann, uh if you zoom back in, you can see my little island, but uh, it's not mm -hmm. my island, but Kent Island down at the bottom. There's three, three islands. This is where you hang uh, out? Oh, where I hang out all summer. Yeah. The Bowdoin Scientific Station on Kent Island. That's correct. Favorite place in the world. That's not very far from the southernmost point of New Brunswick. It says here. <laughs> uh, That's how, some southern New Brunswick. So this is, some, this is some southern New Brunswick. Exactly. <laughs> That's a new tourist <laughs> attraction for me. Uh, I, I didn't know that was labeled. This is where yeah, you hang out it. all summer yeah. long? Yeah. So is this affiliated with Bowdoin College? That's correct, yeah. 
And tell me again what you study there. I study birds on on Kent Island. I study herring gulls. Like herring seagulls. gulls. Cool. Yeah. And what's what's secretly incredibly fascinating about herring gulls, if I may ask, Liam? Oh, uh, I I study <laughs> uh, adolescent birds. So uh, a very oh, a bunch of whiners, right? A bunch of entitled whiners. I, a little bit. Well, especially yeah. gulls. It's hard to find a gull with a good attitude. But um, I the weird thing about birds compared to other animals is that they grow to full size in their first year of life, whether they're big or they're small. There's some exceptions, but like an albatross oh. is going to be fully grown when it's about eight months old. Yeah. Uh, you know, a sparrow is fully grown when it's about, uh, you know, just a few weeks old. Yeah, but that's why to, that's with the albatross. That's why I only wear one around my neck when it's little. Because yes, they're going to they grow fast. And then that, it's a real pain. The tight window. But um. <laughs> Uh, but then the weird thing about my uh, uh, about birds that, I, that I'm interested in is uh, uh, oh, I remember her. She, uh, well, yeah. Um, Wait, do you know this person? I do. Yeah, yeah that was my. That was, <laughs> it's not a lot I was of just going to ask. Do you know this person? <laughs> um, uh, I, I won't. I won't share her name. But um, right. uh, a lot of birds, whether they grow to whether they're huge or whether they're little, they don't actually start breeding until they're several years old. So, like humans birds there's a difference between being physically mature and being sort of sexually and socially mature so i study that uh process in a couple of different species but herring gulls are, are a great example they don't start breeding until they're about four or five years old uh, so I, what, I, I think about the adolescent birds there. what what moves uh what moves uh young liam to get into the herring gull biz <laughs> uh uh i don't know it was i i the other group that i study is in uh Oh, of course. Um, and this is actually, I should, I should, uh, I should rep the, the coolest bird on Ken Island is a, is a little bird called a, a storm petrel. So gulls, I love, they're, they're some of my favorite, but uh, storm petrels Ooh. are unbelievable birds that you get a few of them down in Maine, but a lot of people don't know about them. Basically like a tiny albatross that lives underground uh, in burrows. Hold nests. on. So tell me more. Uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, uh, from this big family of birds like Ooh. albatross and shearwaters and fulmars, if they, but albatross are the ones that people know about. Uh, there's also teeny tiny ones uh, called, I don't know, teeny tiny, but about this big called uh, storm petrels. And uh, there's different kinds. There's some that breed up in the northern hemisphere. There's some that breed in the southern hemisphere. And they forage way off in the ocean, uh, like hundreds of kilometers offshore. But then they'll, they'll fly back to islands like Kent Island to burrow. Uh, in their nests underground where they incubate they sit on just one little white egg in a burrow you know sometimes shoulder deep underground uh and they'll sit there for like three or four days not eating total darkness until their partner comes in and then the two partners swap and it flies up to sea so uh really really marvelous bird it says here that the association of the storm petrel with turbulent weather has led to its use as a metaphor for revolutionary views the epithet stormy petrel being applied by various authors Two characters as disparate as a Robin Tribune, a Presbyterian minister in the early Carolinas, an Afghan governor, an Arkansas politician, and Maxim Gorky, who the Russian revolutionary writer who bore the epithet the Stormy Petrel of the Revolution, presumably due to his authorship of the famous 1901 poem song, Song of the Stormy Petrel. How about that? That I didn't know. You didn't know that? Yeah. No, that was new to me. <laughs> Here's the de here's the decline of the ashy storm petrel. That's sad. Are you seeing now, this? A lot of them are in really really bad shape. A lot of a lot of seabirds, especially pelagic seabirds like albatross and storm petrels, are super big conservation problem. And now there's avian flu and sort of new things coming up. So, and you're working to save these birds. I'm unfortunately I do sort of basic research. So I I'm right now I'm kind of on the evolutionary side of things. So I I don't really help them that much. I try what do you not mean you're on them, the evolutionary but... side of things? Uh, thinking about like a uh, sort of theory problems uh, uh, about the weirdness of bird evolution, but I uh, I have a lot of a lot of friends who are doing much more useful kind of constructive work, and I'm hoping to move over in that direction because it is kind of sp spooky. You get out there and you you fall in love with them immediately, and then it's upsetting to think about them all kind of disappearing. Any birds you love in particular in New Haven, Connecticut? Uh, there's a bunch of fish crows that are all. I remember those guys from when I went to college. Those are just cool. Hanging those... around, being spooky. Alex, do you know what a fish crow is? I I don't know. I I do. They do they have that little like hackle kind of thing or no? Am I thinking they, something else? 
they look a lot like an American crow, but and it's hard to tell them okay. apart. But you can you can it kind of sounds like a crow with a cold. So where crows go like ah, fish crows go like oh. eh, eh. So you can tell right here, but <laughs> it's not a very good impression. Yeah. <laughs> I also I, I want to say how much I appreciate Liam what John asked you if you have any local favorite birds. The first thing you did is look out the window. You like check like is any are any of my buddies around? Is that's bird person stuff. I love that so much. Yeah, that's great. That's so good. That's that's legit. Yeah. Wow, we learned a lot here. Um, hey, it's one forty nine p.m. here on the East Coast, and uh, uh, I am. Uh, my name is John Hodgman. I'm the host of the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Uh, I'm going to wrap things up. Hey, thanks. Was that the call of a of a fish crow? Yeah, they love the show. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh, oh, hang on. I was going to try to wrap things up, but Kate's got a really good question. Kate, have you ever heard the sound of the Kagaro bird? I have not. I really hope it says sounds. Kagaro, like a Pokemon. I don't know. That's what it says on the, yeah, I don't know. Wildest bird call ever. Let's see. Kagaro bird. All right, Kate, here we go down the road. We're going to wrap it up, but now we got to hear this Kagaro bird. <laughs> Doesn't even show up. Look, the page Kagaro bird does not exist. What? How is it spelled? Okay, this is Kate's. <laughs> awa, awa, awa. Ah! We have fish crows and they love cat food left out for our neighborhood stray. And then we got three stars what is this a real bird i was trying to kagaro bird i guess i'm going to just go like this kagaro. i didn't know if it was the setup to a joke maybe uh kagaros oh azores oh. night birds <laughs> because kate used to live in the in the azores in azores yeah yeah so let's see if we can see this kagaro bird but you really sent me down a road here kate a little road down the azores let's see if this <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So another, another. Cool. Could you hear that? Yeah. You could hear the, that the call of the Kagaro bird. Wait, Beautiful. wait a minute. You Beautiful all could call of the Kagaro bird. You all could, you all could hear it. You all heard that call. Yeah. I heard it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That means you're all going to die within two weeks. <laughs> when you hear the call of the Kagaro. It means no you're gonna be fine you're all gonna thrive it's gonna be terrific <laughs> especially if you eat some of that dulse it's got a lot of vitamins and minerals for you liam what do you what do you eat what do you eat up there in kent island when you're when you're situated up there how long do you spend there where do you sleep in the barracks and what do you eat there's a there's sort of a dorm building it's been uh -huh. set up pretty nicely over the years a lot of undergrads and stuff out there but uh so we'd have normal uh groceries from Graham and Ann that the station directors will pick up sort of once every two weeks or you're so. On a, you're in a research station on a remote island, a remote place. I got to ask you, you ever any trouble with those things? You know, you ever any, the thing trouble? The thing. I forgot about that conversation. My submission from before was, was night of the live thing dead. Night of the was... live the thing dead. Night of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. That's Thank a good you one. for reminding me. <laughs> I want to get up there to Grand Manan Island, particularly when you're there. We're going to have some dulse together. And Let's Richard, will you come down and hang out? How do you get to Grand? How do you get to? Yeah, well, those are sea snails, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I've never had those. Are those good? Tastes like snails. They're good. All right. They're good. I don't know why being such a downer about it. it's all delicious. Oh, it's only your life's work yeah. going to Grand Manan <laughs> Island. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I I uh, I look. I love the maritime. I haven't been able to get up there. Oh, hang on. Yeah. I haven't been able to get up there for a long time, so I hope to come visit again soon. Uh, what? How do you get there? Do you fly or you take a boat? Uh, drive up to, uh, what is it, Black's Harbor, right across the border from Calais, mm -hmm. and then a ferry to Grand Manan, like two or three times a day. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have to wrap this up because my mouse uh, battery just died. So, I, uh, <laughs> and my brain's about to go because it's been so exploded by incredible facts from the maritime provinces. I want to say thank Same. you very much to Liam. I hope to see you in Grandma Nan or in New Haven soon. Go to Patricia's uh, for breakfast sometime. The pantry is terrific. Uh, we have a we have a person in New Haven who loves that spot. I like Mecha Noodle Bar too. Do you ever go over there? Yeah, it's yeah, pretty good. Really they have a chain. They have one in Brookline now. Uh, Richard, what other places in New Haven? Oh, which is the pizza that you like? 
Well, yeah. Go to the ca ca Cafe Le Mans. Cafe Le Mans. Oh, this is, in, this is in, in Charo. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of the, the town again? Charo? Charlo. 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 Oh, Charlo, Charlo. Is the, Charlo is the, Charo is the, uh, the flamenco yeah. guitarist and uh, uh, a television personality, Coochie Coochie. So what's your favorite place to eat in Coochie Coochie, New Brunswick? <laughs> That's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good food. What's the best food they have there? Yeah. It's all good. All right. I, I want to go to that pie shop in defiance of the guy. You know what the motto of New Brunswick is? Tout c'est bon. It's all good. All right. Talk to you. Talk to both of you later. Thanks for being members of Maximum Fun. Truly. Hey, you know what? I'm going to say this right, to, right to these two as stand-ins for all the listeners. Whether you're in Canada, the United States, or around the world, we have listeners to Judge John Hodgman, I'm sure you do too, Alex, from all around the world. Yes. It's an incredible community of listeners and they're all like, the thing of it is, this is why I like to do these Max Fun family meetings because honestly, uh, Alex, you and me are boring compared to these two. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. the listeners have these really interesting lives. They're all so fascinating, secretly and incredibly. And for me, the joy of doing Judge John Hodgman is telling people they're right and wrong, which I love <coughs> to do. Remember how I told you we were wrong about uh, Dulce? Yeah, that's what I love. But I also just love talking to interesting people from all over the world. And um, and that's what Judge John Hodgman allows me to do, to be part of that community. And I really, really appreciate both you and Liam and you, Richard, being a part of the, 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 mem the member supporting community of listeners of Maximum Fun. So thank you very much. And I'm gonna say au revoir to you now. I can't do it that way because yeah. my, my mouse is dead, so. See you later, Liam. See you later, Richard. Hope to see you again sometime soon. Alex, what a pleasure to see you. Thanks for dropping by this Max Fun family meeting. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad I could pop in. Do you have a pet? I do. I have two cats. They're Save not it. Me. Save it. Because Perfect. I'm telling you, this doesn't do anything, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what these, I don't know what gestures will trigger what. But on Thursday, I'm going to be streaming oh. again at noon but it's going to be a special stream it's going to be get your pets that's where i interview people's cats dogs and other pets so Ooh. if you're available and you want to join with your pet don't tell us what kind of pet you have because it'll be a nice surprise that thursday would be the time to do it as well and alex i'm just going to say this as though we're having this conversation but i'm not telling everybody tomorrow at 9 a.m right here where you're watching this i'll be playing SimCity 2013 for an hour or two and that'll nice. be fun then on 4 p.m. tomorrow, we're going to do something right here called Judge Jesse Thorne. Huh? Oops. Oops, all crunch berries kind of thing. I know, wild, right? Just like this. Boom. <laughs> Whoop. This Whoop. is one of those days I... where where my like my hair refuses to gray and my beard only grays. And this is one of those days where it really looks like I'm wearing a toupee. Okay. <laughs> uh Thursday, we're going to get your pets at noon, and we're going to read this Edward Gorey book, The Sopping Thursday, which is about Thursdays and pets. Rare Edward wow. Gorey book about a dog, cat person, that Edward Gorey. And then Friday, starting at noon, it'll be Countdown to Painful Cheese. And let's take a look. Let's see where we are on the Maximum Fun tote board. Maximum. Oh, there we go. Org slash yeah. join. And we while, are now at we're nine, looking, Shadow. Now we're at nine seven six four. And when we reach, and at this point I feel very confident saying when we reach ten thousand new and upgrading members across the network. Yeah. That will unlock Shooting the Breeze Live Edition, one PM on Friday. Jordan Morris and I will be eating the spiciest cheeses in the world. This painful thing, cheese thing makes Kate nervous. Meanwhile, Amab says, my hair looks great. Thank you. I'm using a new shampoo. I use one, I use one pea size amount of shampoo and then I just, to, to dry it, I just let a baby breathe a single breath on my hair and then it's done. It's just that fine. It's just that fine. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for, this is Liam. It's fun to learn about the Kagaro birds. Okay. You, We'll talk to, we'll have to get my husband to introduce you to our good boy on Thursday, since I have to work. If you can imagine SMH Swanson, that's about get your pets on. Anyway, the whole, the whole, the whole, 
this is the whole here screenshot this everybody this is your wow. guy all right see see how professional i am get a screenshot this is the guide for all of the rest of the streams for this max fun drive and after this no more streams so screenshot it send it around join us if you're a listener and you want to become a member, MaximumFun.org slash join. If you are a member and you can afford it and you want to upgrade or boost, MaximumFun.org slash join. If you are uh, not a member and can't afford to be a member right now, I understand. MaximumFun.org slash join is a terrific link that you can send to all your friends, particularly your incredibly uh, your incredibly uh, wealthy relations. Uh, and, um, you know, if you, uh, if you are already a member and you're exactly where you want to be, it's glad I'm glad that you know how to make yourself happy. That's terrific. Maybe there's someone in your life who can't afford it right now or doesn't or would appreciate being a member and you can uh, gift them a membership by going to what is it again, Alex? Maximum fun something? Um, Maximumfun.org slash join. Listen to secretly incredible tab. Yeah, listen to secretly incredibly fascinating on Maximum Fun, as well as the flop house and John Moe's uh, depression mode. Uh, as well as uh, uh, his other Sleeping with Celebrities. And then Jesse Thorne was also here. Um, the bull, you know, not only Judge John Hodgman, but Bullseye and Jordan Jesse Go. Anything else you want to talk about, Alex, before I say goodbye? Uh, shout out to Richard Platel in the comments. He said he was like in the middle of upgrading his membership and then got pulled onto the stream. So he's part of the, the team getting us to the, the hot cheese. It's great. Thank you. And Thank really, you so much, Richard. Really thankful. Everything John said. Yeah, let's get to the hot cheese. All right. Yeah. We'll talk to you next time. We'll talk to you tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'll be playing SimCity. Thanks so much for being here. Bye, Alex. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.